Hello beautiful humans, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tessa Stewart. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back sis. Today I will be going over my top tips and tricks to achieve smooth, silky, straight hair results at home. If you're not new to my channel, then you know that I do quite a few hair tool reviews. <laughs> A lot of the times under those videos, I will have subscribers just asking me, what do I do to get my hair so smooth? So I just thought that I would put together a video of just my best practices, what I do to get my hair smooth. I am not a hairstylist, but I have been doing my hair myself since I was a teenager. So I have been flat ironing <laughs> my hair since I was like 15, 16 years old, something along those lines. I think that the experience over time has just helped me get my routine down. It takes me less than 30 minutes to do my hair. It takes me an hour total to do it when you add in washing and blow drying. So I figured I'd share the knowledge and hopefully it will help some of you girls out. So if you wanna know what it is that I do, what my best practices and my tips, my recommendations to keep your hair nice, smooth, silky, and shiny, then just keep on watching. But before we move any further, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you are alerted with all of my future uploads. And let's get right into the video. Hey. we are going to jump right on in so I am starting off with freshly washed and deep conditioned hair so I washed my hair with the Kerastase Chroma Absolute shampoo and then I deep conditioned with the matching Kerastase Absolute mask I'll flash those on the screen I deep conditioned with heat for about 45 minutes the key to consistent, smooth, shiny results are a good shampoo and a good deep condition. So you wanna make sure that you remove all of the buildup from your hair, so shampoo it very thoroughly. I tend to use Salt Fae Free shampoos because I do color my hair. Prior to my hair being like this, my hair was actually ombre. I will flash a picture on the screen. So I am growing out that color. You wanna wash your hair thoroughly, then you want to deep condition it. You wanna use a good, nice, deep conditioner that is going to give you a lot of moisture. If your hair is lacking protein, make sure that there's a good protein balance. And then you want to thoroughly <laughs> rinse all of that conditioner out. While I was in the shower, I divided my hair into four sections. I did that just to make it easier for myself when it's time to apply my leave-in. I go through and spray in my leave-in. My leave-in of choice is an anti-frizz and thermal protecting leave-in, and that is going to be the Kerasos Discipline Fluidissimi Anti-Frizz Leave-In. I love this, I've been using this for years. After I spray in that leave-in, then I like to go in with a cream heat protectant. Because of the state of my hair, I have been doing a lot of braids, and they have sensitized my hair. I have also <laughs> cut my hair in places so bear with me there are, will be some patches but because of how my hair is feeling I just decided to give it a little bit more of a strengthening thermal protectant so I use the Kerastase resistance leave-in this is good for strengthening the hair and protecting it from heat damage as well that is what I do to prep my hair for blow drying and my favorite tool to blow dry my hair is going to be the Dyson supersonic as of this moment my favorite more inexpensive hair dryer is going to be from the babyless brand I will flash it on the screen it will also be listed in the description box below normally when I blow dry my hair I like to use the concentrator nozzle along with a paddle brush of my choice. I just feel that for me, it's easier to get smoother results. If you have the Dyson, then you can just use the comb attachment. I do like the comb attachment. I tend to use the comb attachment when I'm more in a rush. But since I'm taking my time to do this for you today, I'm gonna just show you the method with the paddle brush, okay? So I just wanna give you guys a quick warning before we get into this video just about my hair, okay? So if you've been following my channel, you saw some of my previous videos, like my original Dyson Corral video, you would see how full and nice my hair is. Since then, I've been dealing with health issues that have compromised the integrity of my hair. So if you are looking at my hair, you will be able to see a visible line of demarcation from where maybe the healthier hair is starting to grow in and the older, more brittle hair from the time that I was shedding very heavily, you will see that portion of my hair growing out. I am in the process of slowly cutting that hair out 
as it grows because I wear a lot of ponytails, so I don't wanna go <laughs> have completely short hair that I can't put in a ponytail. So I just wanted to give you that warning from there. Though my hair is technically freshly trimmed, it is not fully even because of health issues as well as damage from braids and cutting my hair. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna start with the first section. Take about an inch thick of a section. I like to blow dry my hair on medium heat and high speed. If you are concerned and you're worried about heat damage, you can do a lower heat temperature if you like, or just lower speed. If anything, do like medium heat, low speed or medium speed. And I think that you'll be, you'll be fine. What you wanna do is you want to take the section that you are going to blow dry, you're gonna pull it taut, and you will take your brush, whatever it is, Put it in at the base of your hair, so at your root. So you wanna get your root nice and taut. The more stretched that you have your hair while you are blow drying, the smoother the results. You can hold your hair between your pointer and your thumb on the other side of the brush, and then you're gonna go in with the nozzle of the brush at the base of your hair. While I am brushing the hair, I am going to move the blow dryer along with the hairbrush, and then I start to brush my hair, and with the bristles facing the actual blow dryer, then I almost sandwich the hair between the blow dryer nozzle and the brush, and then I pull the hair down towards the ends. So I go from root to ends in that same motion through each section in order to ensure smooth results. All right, so you've seen me do those two sections. I'm just gonna go ahead, finish blow drying the rest of my hair, and then we will move on to the flat iron portion. Now, you do not wanna keep the air blowing in the same spot on your hair, especially if you have a blow dryer that is not saying that it won't damage your hair. You get what I'm saying? So much heat concentrated in one area can damage your hair and you want to prevent that. So if you keep the air flow moving or moving with the brush, you will lessen the likelihood of damaging your hair while you are blow drying. All right, girls, so after I initially go through and blow dry each section, once I'm finished, I go through and I just go in and make sure that I blow dry all of the roots, just make sure my roots are good and dry because if they're at all damp, they will revert on me. So I suggest that as another tip for a long lasting style. And then afterward, you can go in with the cool shot and you can just blow your hair with cool air if that's what you desire. I don't always do it. If I'm rushing, I'll skip that step. You want to get your hair as smooth as you can with the blow dryer first before you start your flat ironing process. So next we are going to start straightening our hair. Of course, I am going to be using my Dyson Corral. That is my preferred device of choice. You use whatever works best for your hair and what gets you good results. So now what I'm gonna do is go in with another heat protectant and the heat protectant of choice today is going to be the Paul Mitchell Neuro Style Protect. I spray this all throughout my hair. I spray that through, depending on how my hair feels, sometimes I will go in with a serum, with my Kerastase serum. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a small drop of it in my hand, just one pump, and I'm gonna put that through the ends of my hair. Just 
pull it through the ends. All right, so now I'm ready to flat iron my hair. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to take a small section, about half an inch thick. And you want to do smaller sections. The thinner the section of hair that you take to flat iron, the smoother the results are gonna be. But also the smaller the section, the more increased possibility of heat damage. So you wanna make sure that you are always using the flat iron on the temperature that is appropriate for your hair. So you wanna start at a lower setting and work your way up to get the desired results that you like, or you can consult with your hairstylist for the best temperature to flat iron your hair. Or you can do a quick Google search, <laughs> put in some of the characteristics of your hair and it should tell you. I'm gonna be using the chase method, and that means I'm gonna take my comb and I'm gonna place it in the hair and then follow the comb with the flat iron. So you put the comb in, put the flat iron in, and then just follow the comb with the flat iron. So that's one pass. I prefer to do one pass. If I feel that it's necessary, I will do two passes. Two passes with the Dyson on my hair. It has worked out perfectly for me. Next, I'll move to another section to show you. Just like I did with the front of my hair and I showed you on that first section while I was facing forward, I'm also gonna turn around once again and show you what it looks like from the back. beautiful I am back with my final results this is the finished look so after I flat ironed my hair with one pass of the Dyson Corral I went back in and in four large sections I just did a little bit of like feathering under of my hair just to give it a little bit of shape a little bit of body a little bit of movement and to maintain my hair I wrap my hair around at night and I use a silk scarf to keep my hair secure. In the morning, I just comb it back down. As the days progress, my hair will flatten just a little bit, smoothen out a little bit more. If it does start to revert or maybe get a little bit puffy closer to the end of the week, then I will generally, I will wand curl it. If I don't wand curl it, then I'll put it right into a ponytail <laughs> and keep it pushing until wash day. So just a quick recap of our best practices. You want to make sure that you are starting off with 
freshly washed hair that is free from all buildup. You wanna make sure that you have deep conditioned with a very good moisturizing deep conditioner, add a little protein if you need it. You want your hair to be in its healthiest state before you start the straightening process. Then you're gonna use a good heat protectant, hopefully one that has anti-frizz properties. Then you will blow dry your hair as smooth as possible. Make sure that you hold your hair taut while you are drying the hair, as well as pointing the airflow direction down the shaft of the hair. And you also wanna keep the airflow moving along the hair. You don't wanna keep it in one spot too long. Next, when you actually start to flat iron, you want to be sure to detangle your hair before each section. So section it off into relatively smaller sections and then follow with the comb. If following the comb with the flat iron is too much for you or you can't get the coordination right, just make sure that you detangle each section separately before you run it through the flat iron. And then to minimize damage, you wanna make sure that you do one pass per section, two passes the most, okay? All right, sis. That's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, you are a real one and I love you for that. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you are alerted with all of my future uploads and I will see you in the next video. Bye.